I've woke up very early to do this video, you can see there is bags under my eyes, but that is not the only reason. I've been losing sleep because I want to win on this! I'm only joking, of course, I'm not losing sleep because of this, but still! We need to start winning, and we need to start winning fast if we are going to stay in this division. As yes people, welcome back to the Paris FC career mode, episode number 3 of season number 3, and when they are matching like that, we must take full advantage. We need to try and win games, if you haven't seen the last episode, please go ahead and watch that first. It might not be an easy watch, but it's necessary going in today, because that will explain what I have done off screen. As the first thing I've done, just before I started recording this, is go into the contracts and sign those players up that we did not before and give them an actual decent wage so they're happy. Because I saw the morale go down in them a little bit, especially Laura going to very unhappy for a random reason. As we've got Parika, who's the highest paid, must get in the uh, get in the team a little bit more. Now he's actually the highest paid with Janssen as well. Jan Valerie. So the three signings, of course, understandable. We've got uh, Gatay and Lara now on 20k a week. We've got Saida Rab, who's signed a new contract five years for 19k. We've got Bamba, who's signed one for 19k as well. And Name signed another one for four years. And he's took a rotational role. So... On the whole grand scheme of things, Gurner deserves more game time because he's important and Name's rotational, but Gurner's lower rated. It causes a bit of a dilemma. Still, I will take it that he's took a rotational. I'd rather him do that than crucial and the pressure to play him as Siderab and Laura and Bamba and I think that's it, isn't it? All took important roles. No crucials handed out, which is a good thing, but they all took important. So that's going to be hard to get over the line. Also, I noticed... When I signed Colleen back, I only put him on a one-year deal, so he's still here, but he hasn't got a full contract, as what's he saying right here? Uh, it feels like he should be on better money. He wants to sit down and see a contract. See, that's because I've signed other players up. He wants to hire one himself, so we will go to it. I must have exited without saving last time I did his contracts, because I know for a fact I gave him more than 450 and more than 11 months. I, I must have done it wrong last time. So this time... We'll try and get it right. What a start to the episode this will be if we get, of course, Leo Colleen on an extra contract. May still leaving it, of course, he may still leaving it, but still, it would be very, very nice to keep him around as crucial. Without a doubt, he's getting a crucial team role as he wants a four year contract. That's acceptable. I'll keep him around for that if he decides to stay as he wants a release clause of 134.2. I see that as reasonable as well. That is what it should be really selling for. As then we've got a wage, and he only wants one and a half. Oh, almost one and a half on wage. I just don't see that as realistic. Even though it's just deteriorating our transfer budget, I am going to give him more. He deserves more, of course. So 30k a week. Yes, it takes away from our budget by almost a million, but the players I have in mind for today are free agents. And I am going to have to give him a high wage just to keep the big clubs away. So Leo Colleen will be the joint highest paid player deservedly so at Paris FC and I know a lot of you will be absolutely screaming that I've done that but it gets to me I can't have Perica 73 rated on 30k a week and then Leo Colleen on 1.7 that is just embarrassing how the club is run if it's done in that way it's just it's just gonna lead to relegation the morale will be all over the place so he asked for more money and I delivered so he's um I'm, well I'm gonna say get straight back to it we need to go as he's very happy the happiest he can be that is brilliant for our best player. The best you could ask for as we're going to go to the calendar as well and check who we have today. So there's the games from last time, if you didn't know already. Pretty disappointing as Stady Briest, I think it's pronounced. I don't know how it's pronounced. As the first game, then Deadline Day, then Montpellier and the Derby. To end today's episode off, or maybe we might get a simulation in there. It just depends how Deadline Day goes. But we will be playing the Derby against PSG today. What a start to the season. It may upset a couple of you guys as well, but we are going to go into the first game without doing anything else as Gatay and Lara. He had an injury, so I took him out of the squad, but I think he wants to be back in. As Leo Carlier is asking to play, you know what? The backup keeper wants to play over Badjic, who did have a disappointing game. That's really torn me, that has. He's three ratings higher, Badjic, but he did let in three goals, then four. 
Do we give our youth keeper a chance? It's it's a bit of a sticky one, isn't it? As um, let's just pull the trigger, shall we? Badic did concede seven goals in three games. I'm going to try and do it. Yes, he's his first team, but he should understand why he's benched. He's had poor form. He's 70 rated as well, so Kalier can even grow higher. So I'm going to try it. This may backfire, but Kalier in the goal with Valerie, Bamba, Colleen, Manduki straight back in, and Hanno making up the back five after Janssen's dismissal in the last episode with Masengo Gurner over Name. Yes, Name misplaced a lot of pass in the last game, and of course the squad roll situation is going to lead to him in front with Arab in camp with Laura and Antiste. So yes, I've gone back to Laura after his five-day injury, hoping that we can actually score some goals today and get our first three points and avoid getting in this bad situation, really. We're in the drop zone. And we also are away from home in this game, as this is the team, Stad Brestois, uh, Lassonier in goal, I think that's how it's pronounced, with Manquilo, Duvernay, Hillary and Angilo at the back. We've got Morris, Belmont, Rupp and Honrat with Simeone Zaza and Steve Mounier up front. Two experienced strikers if I've ever seen them. Simeone Zaza, brief stint at West Ham, so I won't say they are Premier League veterans. I mean, Mounier was at Huddersfield and had one good season as well. So failed Premier League strikers, I'd say. Sorry, Mounier, I'm just going to fit you into failed. Simeone Zaza did have a decent career away from, um, um, what's it called? West Ham, of course, in Italy, his native country, as we've Give a foul right there, and Simeone Zaza is going to take this. As what's he going to do? He's going to whip it into the box, headed away straight away from Gate and Laura, and passed on from Saida Rabas. Masengo tries to turn, get the run right there, does pass it to Antiste, but Antiste turns out himself as well into Saida Rab with a knock around the corner, and Laura releases Hanno, who's had a run. The left back's actually got a chance to score here. The wing back shoot across goal, and it's going to go out for a throw in. What a poor shot. In a game this important, we can't be missing chances like that as Bamba crosses it across the field. Now, terrible ball as Steven Mounier just touches it down as well. And they're going to try and run out as Simone Zaza into Mounier and the passing around is a little bit here as Zaza with a turn. Get that Hanno and it was easy really for him as Jan Valery turns his back as well to keep their player off the ball. And now Bamba with it. Have we got someone down the line? We do in Antiste and we love to break on them. Laura pointing to where he wants it, but the defender's just a bit too close for my liking. As Saida Rab makes a great run. Antiste with a great fleet. What a stop from the keeper. And it's going to stay at 1-0. Oh, nil -nil. It should be 1-0, should I say. As Hanna with a great cross. Headed away straight away and Gurner to pick up on it right now. As Saida Rab gives it into Laura. Steps away. Masenga around the corner. Can we score here? Another great save from Larinier. The keeper pulling out two world-class stops, really. As now Gurner around the corner into Masengo. The move is still on as well. I can't believe this that we haven't scored. As Saida Rab running all the way and tries to cross it now into Laura. And over the heads. What a couple of chances they were, though. We should be 1-0 up, and hopefully it doesn't cost like Laurent and Strasbourg, where we did start the games off pretty decent, but then fail in the second half. So we've got to make sure we do, don't uh, do not do that here, should I say, as I'm focused on trying to block this, as Morris has a ball through. It's chipped over Carlier. And normal business is resumed. It's 1-0 to Brist. And I can't be bothered. Here we go again. The youth keeper is beaten at his first chance. And I had to come off the line. I had to shut that angle down because I don't have a clue where Jan Valery is. Where's he gone? On holiday? He should be back there in a heartbeat as Hanno almost on the line. He should have thrown his body out. He doesn't do it as well. And Morris. I'm guessing that might be the Morris from Luton, but... I don't know, just chips the keeper. We need to improve if we're going to get something out of this right now. So Masengo on to Laura. God, it's disappointing that the scoreline is what it is. As now Gurner with it, he's going to walk backwards and forward. Now find Jan Valery, who's going to pass it straight into that gap into Antiste. As Antiste has Hanno and Masengo not making a great run and Laura not making a move at all. And Bamba with a turn right on the spot right there, gives it into Gurner. Now Saida Rab around the corner. I would like a goal before halftime, preferably, boys, as Laura with another misplaced pass as it's definitely our passing that's letting us down at the start of this season, like the one where we failed as well. It's just our team is not cohesive enough as Laura completely swipes out his man. That could have been a red, you know, if it was at the other end of the field, but luckily he's the striker and strikers don't usually get reds. There's now Saida Rab with it into Antistic and we get one before the break. It's through to Gurner. Gurner fighting for it and just loses out on it as the keeper boots it out of play and that is half time. It's 1-0 to Stad de Brestois. I think that's how it's said, but I don't have a clue. I don't care how it's said. All that I care about 
is if this scoreline changes. We deserve to be in front as well. It's one shot, one goal. It just has to be better as now Manduki. Pass straight away into Masengo, around the corner into Lucas Gurner. And Gurner to run through this gap into Saida Rab. We're in fear. Well, I'm fearing relegation this season if this doesn't improve in this game. We've had four easy... Well, not easy games, of course. They haven't been easy, but easily winnable out of the rest of the teams to start this season off and we should have been doing a lot better as this is a decent passing move though straight away at the start of the second half are we going to kick into gear right now does our season start it's good passing Antiste can't get past Duvernay though but we've got to keep the pressure up on the keeper as he sends it long and Raphael Varane ha <laughs> gone to Man United what a realistic signing that is on this career mode we had a point right there I've still got to focus on this game despite the realism which I do enjoy seeing. As Simeone Zaza right on it now. He gives it into Stefan Mounier. Who gives it straight back to Masengo. Who has to keep the ball in that scenario. Now Manduki gives it to Honrat. And we've tried to get a tackle in again. Mounier forward right now to Simeone Zaza again. Who passes it inside. Mounier. It's good passing. It's into Honrat in the middle. And Valerie just steps across in time to get that ball away. As we need to get forward. It's Gurner. It's terrible. It's half an hour remaining as now Laura Antiste make that move he was making all last season as it's an actual decent pass for once and Antiste just gives it to Hanno Masengo as can we get that through again? That was meant for the wing back. You could obviously see that. Let's keep the pressure on the keeper again as he's sending it long every time. He's made two decent saves but his contrib or distribution should I say has been absolutely terrible as Jan Valery straight away throw into Laura. Back down the line to Jan Valery. Get in front, Antiste. You've got to start scoring from these crosses, mate, as it doesn't go to him, though. And Saliba is going to come on for Laura as this is a corner ball. Saeed Arab in the middle. Manduki. Terrible header. Don't even know if it was Manduki in the end as I've made all three subs. Saliba, Perika and Name for Gurner. So that is what we're going to try and do. And of course, uh, Perika came on for Antiste, giving our players a rest because Montpellier is up next. Mont. Pellier. That's going to be one of the hardest games we've had so far. Decent team as they've skilled us right here and Pedro for on goal and scores straight away. Two shots on goal, two goals. Carlier can't be blamed for that one. It was very direct but Pedro, the old Chelsea man, makes it two. Football goes from bad to worse and he's definitely not coming home to Paris. Just look at that skilled past Manduki who of course came out of the lineup, comes straight back in and not impressed. We're going to lose again. Looks like no wins in our first four. As we've still got 40 minutes, it should be enough. As I'm going to go attacking as well. I want to, of course, bear with the formation. I just think it's the players and the passing at the moment. As Saliba onto Perica. Two players who haven't played much. Who's having to link up right here as Perica. 30k a week for that contribution off the bench. That's just that's just not good enough, is it? That is just not good enough at all. And we're 100% getting relegated if we play like we've done today. As Masengo tries to get the tackle in, Belmonte gets it away. And they're just keeping the ball. They're playing it around the back when all our players are flooded forward as well. That's embarrassing, that is, as Harrell even chips our player in the middle, who's Colleen. Colleen's gone forward and getting chipped by their players. That is embarrassing as we put in all his players forward. Five minutes to go. As that passes straight into the middle. Masengo now with it. And Name trying to make the run. And Name's actually in behind. It's Name with a shot. What a save from the keeper again. As Pericka with a cross in. Name with a turn. Another cross. And this time it's away from them. As he saved three amazing chances. However, that falls to Pericka. And we do have one back. The big striker proves why he's worth 30k a week. Very lucky. And could we get a comeback? I'm not sure. Got two minutes added on. It's terrible defending, isn't it? As look at that. Falls straight back to him and bang. 2-1. As we need to chase the game right now. Pedro. Oh, Name was close, you know. But they've passed out of danger. How much is added on? Two minutes. If we tackle Pedro right here, we might have a chance. One minute. Manduki. Send it forward. Not the greatest ball forward, but Saliba does receive it. Into Saida Rab. And Name. Please make a better move than that. Please. As Name is going to try and turn right here. Can we make a move, please? Number 20. As that's a good one. Parika in behind. Parika. Cross that in. Saida Rab makes it 2-2. Two -two. How have we done this? It's brought back and we're going to draw against Priest. What a comeback with two minutes left on the clock. We do level the game up and it's all that we deserve. Okay, this season might not be written off. Parika with the run and he's got a golden assist off the bench. Saida Rab jumps, leaps and puts it in the corner. Stad de Brest will not believe their eyes. I don't believe my eyes. 
What a comeback! As that should be the final whistle straight after Saeed Arab with his first goal in this league and of the season. As yeah, final whistle blown straight away. Them fans will not believe what's just happened. We have drawn the game after being 2-0 down and they were home and dry. I, can't, I just can't believe that's happened. Ultra attacking has actually worked for us. 2-2. And of course I would have much, much, much rather won the game but... I don't care how that went. Nami actually came off the bench and bossed it with Parika doing the same. So I've got some uh, decisions to make for the next game. Let's look at the money that's been spent by teams. And let's have a look at ours. But it's like, what, just over 10 million? It can't be like 90 million, 14 million. Yes, we brought a couple of players in and Vargas being the only one leaving. We, we we should be relegated with the amount of money we've spent. However, Stadi Brest only spending three million. Stadi Rem spending more, and they're below us. So that makes me feel a bit better. So are we going to make any moves on deadline days? We've got an offer straight in for Sayurab from Getafe, of course, after that great game. But no, he's going to stay in his native country of France to try and boss this league a little bit more, even though we're in the relegation zone. As I think it's time for one more signing from us as well before the day's over. Ludovic Ries. Went in for him before, but I just can't get him out of my head. I think he's really got potential. And with Gurner being 71 rated and important, this guy should definitely be important. And of course, goes ahead of Name in the team. So, Ludovic Reese carries to glory. He only wants rotational as well, which is perfect. Thank you very much for taking that role, Ludovic. As he wants a five-year contract. Okay, I will accept 22-year-old 74 rated. is perfect. Disregard the release clauses. He wants a 13 million one. Go on then, we'll give him it for now, but hopefully that's cancelled out later down the line as we will offer him a wage of 9 to 8, 17k, 17k, that's what we'll settle for. Hopefully he takes it as he wants 25, mm, that's, that, that's, a, that's a lot, that is a lot for a player of his evaluation. We'll offer him it though, because he is a new signing of course, as he wants half or more. For well, the bonus taken off as I will give him it. Ludovic Reese is maybe our final signing. I don't know. Depends on our money situation, which is looking quite bleak. Look at that. 177k. And I think that's got to go into maybe more wages for our players. Definitely got nothing to spend in January. So I think the only way we can make money now is outgoings. And I'm kind of looking at Colleen. Because I don't want to sell him, but he's going to make the most money. That's what I'm trying to say. As Ludovic Reese, does he come straight in the lineup? Gurner didn't have a great game, but Name did. I'll have to decide it when it gets to it. As the hours are ticking by as well, and we've got an offer. Campanini, Brentford push, Charlie Good. I did say play against Grimsby last season. Not good enough for me, though, I'm afraid. I do not want to accept that one, Campanini. We need a right wing back more than a centre back at the moment. So, we'll see out these last couple of hours right here. See if anything happens. Even Stati Press spending 34 million. We need to step up our spending game if we're in this division next year. And, of course, if we get money in January, as this is going to be the last hour over the line. And we've got four messages in. Are they just scout reports or monthly uh, youth scout reports? I think they are. So we're still in the relegation zone, I've seen right there. And yes, no offer. That is it. Done. Ludovic Reese brought in on deadline day. I'm not going to lie at all. In my head, I know, I think, that is the weakest window we've had as a Paris FC manager right here. And we're not doing that best, uh, that good on form, but I will just take it for now. It's got two reports right there and an offer for Leo Colleen from Bayern Munich. It's after the bell. I don't think he can leave. And I'm going to negotiate it. Bayern Munich, of course, is not one of them teams you can turn down. And the money is just appealing to me for January. With ourselves in the relegation zone with Colleen, I'm thinking, could we get out of it if we spend more money in January without Colleen? That's my thought process. As let's see what we can do. Sell on clause. I can see him leaving. He's only 19. 5%. And propose a new transfer fee. 99 million. That will do me very nicely. Bayern Munich, are you going to spend it? They are. Colleen is going to leave if this goes through, which is heartbreaking, but very good for our finances as well. And of course, does he want to stay around for a relegation battle? I would say no. So we'll let him go. That rhymes means it must be kind of fate as Colleen has been sold. Don't tell me he's left right now, has he? No, he's still in the team till January. He's going to give it us all and give us some money. I honestly feel like Mr. Krabs a little bit as we're still trying to find our first win of the season, get out of this relegation zone before Stade Rems and Nice pick up a win. That puts the pressure on us as these are in ninth position and we are at home as I've already made the lineup for this one. We're going to start Callier in goal again. The youth keeper, do have faith he can be, of course, better. He only conceded both shots, which 
I think the first, uh, the, the second one was unsavable and the first unlucky to get chipped with Valerie there, Bamba, Colleen, Manduki and Hanno. Might start playing Pontus Janssen soon, but of course Colleen, whilst we have him, we might as well play him with Masengo, Name and Cider Wrap in camp. Parika up front and Antiste joining him just because I think he offers a little bit more than Laura is creating more chances so that's why he's on the bench and let's have a look at this Montpellier team it is Omlin in goal I thought you said Omlin then I'm going to say Omlin with Ristic, Mendes, Julian and Suarez at the back Campunzano sitting uh, Mavidi, Savina, Ferry and Despov with Delort up front experienced Algerian I think Lewis Potter on the bench Mark Albrighton on the bench okay they're English wingers as now Manduki straight away on the ball let's try and beat these though shall we I mean that is the objective of football as now Name straight on it he's going to try and pass it oh and that just just came off to Perico who of course had a great solid um, debut off the bench. Well, not debut. It was his second game. What am I about? Compared to his debut, it was miles head and shoulders above, if that makes any sense. As Perica on it again, tries to put a ball around the corner into a Rab who he set up last time as a Rab tries to spin back and pass it him. And that was a heavy pass back to the keeper as we put the pressure on with Perica. And that's going to be our throw in, as let's take it really quickly, shall we? It's going to be Name to throw it in. Masengo comes short. As Hanno and Masengo looking for a bit of a run, but it's going to back heel it into Name right now. And Name through that middle gap with took a challenge off ball, I think, as Antiste fires that in. And what a goal from Yanis Antiste at home as we have the one deal lead right here. What a start to the game. Yanis blasted. What a hit, son. What a hit. Look at this. Just turns on his left peg as well. I don't think he's left footed. But look at that, straight into the top bin. The keeper stands no chance. And we have a lead for only the second time this season. Of course, last time we had a lead, we lost 4-1. Must hold it. And this is what should be on our hardest game, I'd say, as Jorman tackled right there from Bamber. And I thought it was almost handball, but no. As it's passed straight onto a rab and side a rab. Antiste in front. You can see why I picked him now. As he's made another great run. It's Yanis Antiste on it. Perica with the pass through. Yanis Antiste left it too late. And Omlin with an easy save. We should have doubled our lead right there. Got two goals for the first time. As the ball straight into the box and Julian beats us to it. As Mavidi to come away with it. Masengo with a great tackle into Bamba now. And onto side a rab as Bamba cross it. You're a centre back but that is a decent cross nurse Suarez. Who does get it away? I even speak right because I'm not hyper about what's happening in this game as Parika back to Bamba. Why is he playing at right back now as he puts a cross in straight to Omlin this time? But I've got to just say, what a performance this has been, lads. Why can't we play like this more often as Delort gets a pass through right there? And we've got to try and get a tackle in. It's um, Savnir with the ball back into Jorman. Jorman around the corner to Savnir again. And oh, Hanno. With a great little lunging right there is now Name to come away with it. And Name in the middle to Saiderab, who's going to have to just put his foot down. Saiderab into this gap. Jan Valery, please start making runs forward, mate. When you come forward as well, he doesn't come back. He just likes to stay at right back for some reasons. Now Perica, now he's running. And now he doesn't get the ball. Despite our passing still being horrific, at least we have the lead this time. As Masengo got a flick on right there. Over the top, Jan Valery. Touch, control, bang. Great cross. Just headed away from Julian at the front post, though. So it's going to be a corner kick. As Saida Rab to whip it in this time. And Colleen with the header. Just in front of the goal. As the half-time whistle has gone as well. We have a lead. Oh, my days. It's come as a wonder goal, though. And Tiste with a great blast into the top corner which gives us this lead, but we've got to hold on to it. No changes at the break, no changes at all. Come on, boys. Savani 8 with the ball right here as he skipped past Name. Looks like they're going to try and play a little bit more in the second half, which, of course, I don't doubt. This time around as well, we do have a winner lead and ten, more than 10 men, should I say, on the field. We haven't got a man sent off as Perica chasing them down. The big man does like to use his stamina a little bit because, of course, he is still full in the tank by the looks of things. He's not fast, but he does run around as Fury with the ball right here. Manduki comes right side to tackle and Masengo to run away with it. Han Noah, keep on going. He's going to drop it off to Perica. Now Antiste with a pass right there, a 1-2. As where's our left wing back, Hanno? He's right there. I just couldn't see him as Hanno picks up on it right now. Going to pass it back into the middle with a skill pass. Dodgy one, but Antiste to get it. Now in the middle to side a rab. And the run from Name is a good one. Name strike that first time. Oh... Dodgy one, but to be fair, Perica should have got on the end of that. As they're passing it straight forward as well. Jan Valery, easy. Easy work. I mean, not the greatest pass. And Colleen with 
a terrible pass out from the back as Delort. Jan Valery again though just gives him that grateful nudge which knocks him off the ball and Antiste making the run Mendes this time cuts it out as Ristich the pass into Savanier and Jorman to come forward Jorman tackled by Masengo and Saida Rapp as we are putting the pressure on and getting our tackles right the passing is still off but the tackles are good as Antiste turns out into Masengo. Parika through the middle. Parika does receive it around the corner. Saeed Arab, Jan Valery now. I see Masengo making the move. It's Antiste it's whipped into. And it's just never reaching him. As I've queued up two substitutions I'm going to make. I'm going to give Ludovic Reese his debut in central midfield. And Laura is going to come on for Parika right now. As Colleen with a pass straight through the middle. On to Saida, Rab back heel into Masengo is a good one as Antiste is going to pass it straight on to Hanno and Parika, can he do something before he goes off? He's a tall striker and Hanno's got a good whip into him as that's a great one, Parika with the header, just over. And 15 minutes remaining, of course, Stad Brest, we turned it around in the last five minutes so nothing is a given. We need to try and keep hold of this lead as we have it as Antiste with a pass straight into Laura and Laura with a pass straight through again but it's just not a good one as Jorman straight to Ferry and couldn't get the tackling right there as they're going to try and come forward at us right here got to get his tackles right Ferry turns us skills in the middle as he gets the ball onto Savanier right now through to Jorman as Jorman's got a couple of ball rolls in his locker as well but Ferry now onto Albrighton Albrighton round but still not getting at us as I'm nervous for this one now. I am very nervous. All Brighton, they're moving forward with some aplomb right here. It's in the middle. Jorman into Savanier. Just don't let him get that shot off and don't give away penalties. It's turned Jan Valery and it's just wide. He has his head in his hands as I would do the same. Very, very lucky he didn't score. And very, very lucky not to be losing as Colleen. Great challenge that. He knows he's off to Bayern and he knows he needs to prove himself as Antiste. No! Passing in front. I never wanted a back heel in that situation as Julian. I think that's the Julian from Celtic. I'm not sure. Returning to France as Madivi with a pass around the corner into Delort. Pass forward is a bad one though. And Jan Valery straight back to Carlier who might have kept a clean sheet here. The youth player and has as we have our first win. Sorry if I scared you right there. But we have our first win of the league on season courtesy of Montpellier. Which on paper should be our hardest game of the season so far but no it's it's been our easiest a clean sheet and a 1-0 win is just what we needed and straight after that as well we've got a message from Stefan Bajic saying he should have it would have done a good job against Montpellier mate wrong opposition Callier kept a clean sheet you on my uh, on the other hand my friend haven't so far actually no it has it kept one against Lens, but we'll forget about that so the next game is the easiest game of the season as well compared to the rest of them Paris Saint-Germain. It's the derby. It's the derby we've all been waiting for. It has arrived September 16th. Oh my days. Please, boys. We cannot be let down here. Neymar Jr., the top scorer. We have these, then Nimes, then Bordeaux, Nantes, who are going to be in the next episode, but I'm going to forget about that for now as let's have a look at the league positions of them as well as we are in 15th. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, judging how we started off, we do have that win that we needed away from the relegation zone of Stadio Rams and Nice still not winning. But where's Paris? If they're not top, which they are, I would have been very surprised. 13 points, them and Lyon unbeaten so far. Let's try and put a change to it. As this is the team we're going for. One change hopefully makes the difference with Carlier in goal. Yes, the youth player. Why not try him against the best team in the league? Jan Valery, Bamba, Colleen, Manduki and Hanno as two of them are a little bit tight as well, which does worry me. Masengo and now may have got some covering to do in front of them with Saeed Arab hopefully staying as like a central midfielder this game with Laura and Antiste up front. So Parika comes out. I need someone with pace who can run back and defend for this game as this is going to be a nervy one. And this one is even away from home. I forget the name of this stadium. I honestly do. Part de France, that's of course. Of course it is as it's match day six as well. The big one. The Paris Derby. And I'm very nervous for this one. I am very nervous. Big stretch for the game. Let's get the blood flowing and pumping as Kaylor Navas is still there in net. About 47 year old. Bernat, Rudiger, Marquinhos, and Aurier. Lo Celso, Neymar Jr., and Yuri Tielemans with and, uh, Andy Herrera, is it? Not Andy Herrera. I forgot his name. Herrera, Mbappe, and Riyad Mahrez. No Di Maria. Neymar in camp, and Mbappe up front. That 
can't say I'm not nervous. There's Neymar Jr. on the ball straight away. A little bit of a skill from him as we've won the ball, but that's a late advantage. Look how far back it is. Ref, you don't have to remember that one as Mbappe to chip this in. Marquinhos tries to get it. Leo Colleen with a tackle away. He's going to be after playing. He's going to be playing, should I say. Um, Paris in tighter games down the line. There's now Neymar Jr. with the ball again, though. He's got skillful feet. Top scorer as Lo Celso gets tackled by Colleen again. Good work from him. As can we get some passes together? Name charging up the field, you know, and he's been allowed to do so as Antiste with the run. Almost went through to him, but we've won a throw-in. Celebrating that like we've won the game. As now Name back to Jan Valery. Valery through the middle, straight into Saida Rab. As Antiste move him out of the way, I beg. And no Masengo. Oh. And Saida Rab just held on to it for a little too long. That could have been a chance. As Aurier, I've just realised as well, Serge Aurier has returned to PSG. Was there before, as that's a dodgy pass straight into him. And Neymar Jr. into Lo Celso. Tried to get the tackle in Mbappe. Back to Lo Celso! And it's in the back of the net. Could not defend that one. A derby goal straight away, and it's Lo Celso. Giovanni Lo Celso, one of two Tottenham men to go to PSG, who gets the goal. We tried to get there with Colleen, we just couldn't. And we're 1-0 down in the derby already. It's disappointing, but to be fair, could we stop it from happening? Very, very quick passing in that scenario. So Manduki, back heel straight away to Hanno. As Hanno just chipped that in the middle, that's a good ball. Side of turn, pass it again. Can we even level this up right now? No, because Name's put a terrible pass in as well, and I can see why he wanted rotational. As Mbappe straight away from us right there. Don't chip the keeper. Carlier went down and didn't even get back up. It's two. It's two. It's Kylian Mbappe. And you can tell why these have scored 20 goals in six get or five games before this one. It's absolutely rapid. And yeah. Quality. <laughs> Just a quality team and Hopefully one day we can beat him. Bloody big ask though, as Masengo tackled straight away from Riyad Mahrez as well. As these are just skill FC. These are skill FC. We haven't really got a skiller in our team. We're a bit route one, aren't we? Five at the back, no skillers. These are just just attacking and full of skills. As now La Celso with a chance to get his ball rolled us. And it's three. It's actually three. Right, no. No, 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 boys. We need to stop. Damage limitation now, please. Damage limitation. This could be an absolute bloodbath. When Giovanni Lo Celso gets two against you, you know you're in trouble. It's just a skill. Look at that. The ball rolls superb. And the finish outside of the foot superb as well. It's 3-0. Tierleman's with it right now. Through to Mbappe. Mbappe will try to tackle him right there as Neymar, top scorer. At least if he doesn't score, that's an achievement in itself. As now Namo with a pass straight forward into Antiste. Antiste with the overlap from Laura. Oh, if that was lighter... He maybe had a run through the middle right there, but doesn't as we're approaching half-time in 3-0. Is what we've got to try and keep it at, or decrease, of course, as Masengo with a good tackle right there up the field. And Hanno Masengo seems up for this game. Antiste, Laura on the overlap right here, as Laura has it. Have we got us wing-backs? I can guess they're not going to flood up, and I know the reason why. They don't want to concede anymore, as Antiste does have it. First time we've stepped in their box with one foot, as Masengo onto Laura. Laura trying to battle to keep this ball, does so. Gatte and Laura with a shot, and Rudiger blocks. Hey, at least we've got a shot off as a corner ball. Can we take the most of this? though it's crossed in La Celso away as Marquinhos diving in the way as well as him so you can see how much they want to defend even though it's 3-0 already as it's approaching half time and no ref let's take the throw in as it is going to be half time though 3-0 to the rivals there's a lot of work to do not just in this game but in seasons to come to beat these so am I too disheartened not really. As Giannis Antiste has the ball right here in the middle as well. Gatay and Laura in front. Gatay and Laura making that run as well. And Gatay and Laura with the ball. It's a chance. Kaylon Navas beaten. We have a goal. We have scored against Paris Saint-Germain. Paris FC have their first derby goal in League One. And it's a great finish that one. It's through the middle. It's ran onto by Gatay and Laura who finishes it into the bottom corner. We have a goal against them. It's not impossible. And that is the foundation we must build upon. Could we... I'm not even going to... Well, I am going to say it. Could we put a comeback story in? I don't know. It would be a huge ask that, though, wouldn't it? As Antiste... Oh, held on to it a little bit too long as Giovanni Lo Celso gives it out and almost got there again as Neymar Jr. Straightforward Leo Colleen with the tackle right here now as we're chasing this ball down with Colleen as well, trying to put the pressure on them. Jan Valerit to bring away the ball right here as he's going to run it down this wing. Keep on going, Jan. 
Keep on going. This is the best run you've done all season long. As it's the worst pass, I think. But we still do have the ball as Name gives it back to Jan Valery. As this is a good move down the right-hand side. No pressure from Juan Bernat just as of late. As we're going to give it into Name. Name into Saeed Arab. Please be onside, Laura. Please be onside as he doesn't get the touch right. And he's off. And 70 minutes on the clock. Jan Valery with a pass straight into Name. As Name is going to switch this across into... Lucas Gurner on to Antisto, who has to hold the ball off and does very well. As now Sider up to the side of him. It's Name. It's Name running with this ball. Laura is kind of through the middle, but he's not making a decent run. As Name going all the way. Tries to cross it. Maybe. No, not handball. I was hoping for a second the referee was just delayed with it. As Di Maria is off the bench, but Neymar Jr. on it right now. He switches a great ball out to... Uh, Pablo Sarabia as they've made some changes let's get at them as Lo Celso with it right here as well and Mbappe he's got Lo Celso with him Mbappe with a skill and Carlier with a decent save first one he's had to make against Pochettino's men right there as it's going to be a corner ball can we get this header away please Neymar Jr to whip it in and Marquinhos Jan Valery with a touch I don't think he even knew he'd made as that's a terrible pass out as well as Rudiger gives it to Di Maria and we're on the back foot a little bit again, but it's not new to us in any game really. As now Narega, never heard of him with a pass back into Tielemans, makes a run. Narega with a shot and it's 4-1. Comeback that I had a little bit in my mind is over, but it was never really there, was it? 4-1 Paris FC, not FC, SG. Paris Derby, the fight for the capital is going to go to them in this occasion. And yes, deservedly so, no doubt about it. As it might be even more, Neymar Jr. on it, 82 minutes in, and Bamba tries to get that away. Still can't as Narege. I've never heard of him, but he keeps the ball as Tielemans now. Got the tackle in there, Jan Valery straight forward to Ludovic Reese and Ludovic Reese try and turn the afterburners on a little bit as he gives it into Kate and Laura and Antiste. Over the top, please run, please run, get there. It's only Aurier. As we're approaching the end of the game, and please don't be five. We've already scored five goals in this game altogether, and Carlier's had enough. As now Morega, or is it is it Norega? I think it's Norega with the skill back, but that is the final whistle. It is a 4-1 thumping from the rivals, the big rivals, but I don't care. I do not care because I expected it to happen. You might think that's bad mentality, but they're the best team in the league. They lose literally one game, if that, every single season. And we're in a relegation battle. It's not like it was a huge, huge game as Campani is saying, don't count me out as we are still two points ahead of relegation. Lorient to thrashed us are below us right now, so at least that's a positive as Nimes is up next. But I am going to end the episode straight away right here. That is done. So thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, share and subscribe with the notification bell as well so you do not miss any episodes of this career right now. As it's just, 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 just very... I, I don't know the word, anticipate, no, on the edge of the seat for me at the moment, but let's try and remove that by winning a couple next time out. There we go, got there in the end. Let's take care in a bit, and peace, guys.